Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to work on a four count drill in order to improve the depth of your squat. Squats are a fundamental human action. They're one of the basic six things that you practice with kettlebells, but you practice them with barbells, you practice them with dumbbells, you practice them with slam balls. Kettlebells just tend to be the easiest thing to help people get good technique fastest. Because of the way a kettlebell is loaded, people tend to get better squat dynamics. If you have bad squat dynamics when you're doing something like a med ball squat, they might never get better. With a kettlebell, if you just put the kettlebell in the right spot, then over time people get better. But everybody's squat can be better. All of our squats can be better forever. You're kind of never done with it until you can get all the way down to the ground, sit down on the ground under load, and stand all the way back up a full range of movement loaded squat. The most important kettlebell squat that we can learn for newer athletes and for advanced athletes is the bottoms up kettlebell squat. Point two feet generally straight ahead, thumbs point towards the sky, thumbs point forward, pick the bell up. So we call it bottoms up because the bottom of the kettlebell is on top as opposed to holding it this way. People who do it this way can stay with bad dynamics. By flipping the kettlebell over, it tends to put people at a right angle with their arms, and then people can not get down. Because it's a lever, people can lean back away from the kettlebell and get the kettlebell further away from them, which allows them to work on getting lower and lower and lower in their squat. The goal is to get the spine as vertical as possible, drive the shoulder blades back and down, squeeze the lats, and the lower your squat, the more your core has to activate to hold you up. In order to help people get even lower in their squat and eventually work on the transition down to the ground, we're going to do what's called a four count drill. If you're training outside and it's really hot, don't put your hands on hot asphalt, put on a set of gloves. These are Mechanics wear covert impact threes, I think. Point your feet generally straight ahead, although with this drill, they'll probably deviate as you're working on your mobility. Get down, same idea, elbows in between knees so that you can drive your knees out. Count one, reach back, put your palm flat on the ground. This allows people to work on getting lower and lower. Count two, put the other hand down on the ground, go back the way you came. Back the way you came and up. Four movements, go to the other side. Reach back, palm on the ground, palm touches down, lift the chest up, go back the way you came, use this arm to drag yourself forward, bottom of your squat. One, two, three, four. Activate, drive up, verticalize the spine, get down. One, two, three, four, activate. One, I'm looking that way, two, Open the chest, look the way you started, use this hand to drag you up. Usually I like thumbs towards the sky in this position. One, two, three, and four. This helps us get more and more mobility in the bottom of our squat. It introduces rotation. Usually people will find that they can go back on one side, but they are unable to go back with the other side. We're working on a bunch of different things here. Ankle mobility, knee mobility, balance and shifting so that eventually we can get down to the ground, link this into different types of get-ups and eventually drag ourselves all the way up onto our feet. We can always be better at squatting. We can squat with heavier loads, we can change the shape of the object and we can link squats into other types of things. A squat is part of a get up. So if your squat is not low enough to get down, you're probably gonna have a hard time turning that squat back into a get up. This is a simple drill, but it's not an easy drill. Usually this is done as some type of warm up before a heavy squatting program, where you're making sure that your hips, your ankles and your knees are all warmed up for when something inevitably goes wrong in training. The heavier the weights you push and the longer you squat, the more likely it is that something may go wrong. So think of this as building safety valves so you can learn to fall down without ripping out a knee, ripping out a spine, or just generally doing damage to yourself. 
we're always training for more range of movement than we probably commonly need so that we are building a safety valve.